Islam honor the right of everybody, but everyone don't honor the right of the Muslims. It's so sad. But last right now. Today in my country, not Muslim girls, Chinese girls. Now they are dressing in long dress like the Muslima. Going to school. It's not that the school imposed this law, but they feel that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time you're watching from, I'm so glad to have you all here. What should sisters do if they are being denied to wear their hijab in schools? How can they wear their hijab even though they are being denied to do so in schools? So let's hear from this man's point of view. Let's check it out. Um, oh, yeah. We've got a question from the brother here yeah. in the uh, hut over here. Bismillah. Um, uh, what? Let the brother first. Brother first. He's been waiting since the yeah, last speaker. The last actually. Actually. We've got to give the people their rights, human rights. Thank right? you. Thank you. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Go salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. So just I wonder about uh, the right to wear for uh, women, uh, especially uh, when it comes to hijab. Hijab. Because uh, in Norway it has been uh, very good last years. We had a problem, but uh, the last, this last year now it's uh, too much uh, disgusting about to make uh, the hijab for the, the women forbidden at schools. Mm. So, uh, no. but we want, uh, we ask because we want to come in dialogue with the, there is uh, some parties, why? Because if you may say don't come drunk to school, so they don't come stone, don't come with weapon. So uh, they say because it's uh, disturbed when you come with hijab at the classroom, it disturbs uh, maybe other girls and other boys. No. So it's better to come with, uh, uh, they have another ID to come with uh, maybe a short t-shirt and tight jeans. So maybe the boys will for, uh, feel more comfortable so it don't disturb them. <laughs> So we okay. just want to, if you can make no. some. Uh, no. I think we got the question. Did you get yes. the yes. question about, about the hijab. hijab and the rights of hijab? Yes. In, in the right hijab. to dress, yeah, to cover yourself. Now, fellow brothers and sisters, any Muslim country you go today, you see how torn the Muslim is. Like my country, Malaysia, example. Honor the right of every citizen. If you are not yet a Muslim. How you want to dress, that is your right. But even though we give them their right, every right has a limit. Yeah. Now this is very important. Don't think that when you have your right, that means you have the right to do anything you like. No. Every right, there is a hudud. There is a limit. As long as you act accordingly, that do not yeah, dishonor the right of others, then you are in the right path. Like Allah said, Lakum dinukum waliyadin in Islam, you have your way of life, we have our way of life. Now, the not yet Muslim in my country, I give you one example. In my country today, the school uniform is general. For the Muslim girls, they should wear their hijab. Because they are Muslim, that is their right. For the people who are not yet Muslim, they have their uniform. That's how they were dressed to the school, the same school. And there's no problem at all because we exercise human rights. Not like the country today, they say human right, human right, they champion human right, but they only talk about their rights and they disrespect our rights. That's why there's no peace. When you want peace, you must learn how to give everybody their rights. There is under the limit of do not yeah, disrespect other people's right. Now, today in my country, not Muslim girls, not yet Muslim girls, Chinese girls, now they are dressing in long dress like the Muslima. Going to school. It's not that the school imposed this law, but they feel that it's more modest, more feminine. For their girls to dress long dress to the school than just dress skirt. They have long skirt, but they want to dress long dress like how the Muslim are dressed up by themselves. And it really gives them special kind of respect. 
They feel more secure, like the brother said, when you cover yourself properly, when you respect yourself, people will respect you. I don't know whether it is good for anybody to dress anything they like to dress, no? Today we have a lot of people, we believe that we grow with our dress. When the newborn baby, were they born dress up with some, anything? Any baby who has born, any child that has born, do they come out with something cover their body? No. They are born naked. We are all born naked. Alhamdulillah. Then we start to cover them up. We put a napkin on them. We buy some dress for them based on their size. Now they are just one week, we dress up with the dress of a one week dress. Now the baby is growing. Now he's one year. Do you use the same size of dress upon the baby? No. You got to grow with your size. Now, now the baby is five years. Do they still wear the one year old dress? It didn't fit them. Now they go according to their size. Now they are five years, they will dress the dress of a five years. Yeah, child. Now they are 15 years old now. How do they dress? Like five years here? Something is wrong with their dress. I think maybe we are having problem. No. Our mind do not grow. Our body grow, but our mind do not grow. I mean, it is practical that you grow with your dress. Your size. Yeah. The dress also keep on growing together with your size. Islam honor that right. Yeah, Islam honor that right. I would say that now the world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us who are the human rights champion. Or who are the real hypocrite? Just talking human right today, human right tomorrow. After that, no, no, you have no right to wear hijab. There was not a problem before. Do they have this problem before? No problem. Why today there is a problem? What happened to these people who are civilized people? People who consider themselves as, you know, uh, the, the champion of human rights. No, that's very wrong. That means whatever they claim before, they are just hypocrites. They are not sincere. When we say we respect the right of every individual until today, Islam honor the right of everybody, but everyone don't honor the right of the Muslims. It's so sad. But lastly, brother, there's a lot of hikmah. Maybe it's time. I don't know. I feel everything there is a hikmah. Warakul mas'ala sa'ada. Behind all problems, there is always a wisdom. Maybe it's time. Allah want the Muslim to be by themselves, to educate their own children, to give the right education to their children, the right tarbiyah, because the system that we have today are not helping our children to be salihat wa salihin, to be righteous children. The system have failed. They give only dunya, where Islam the education in Islam provide you dunya and akhirah. It's a balanced knowledge. A knowledge of dunya and akhirah. It is the best knowledge. Maybe, I don't know. I would say that whatever happened, there is a wisdom behind it. We must open our eye. Now, if you're given a child, you want to send them to that school to go against Allah's rule, or you decide for homeschooling. Which one is better? Which one is better, brother? Homeschooling is better. You educate your children. You make them a salihin wa salihan. There is the best investment. And there is the best asset for you because the Prophet said, Iza mata ibn Adam in qata amalu illa bin thalasa. Sadaqatin jariya ilmu yuntafa'abi wa waladan saleh. The best thing that you can have is you have righteous children and if you die, these children will pray for you. And the Prophet said in the Day of Judgment, there was some man who Allah have 
or David he's going to hellfire. And he knows he's going to hell because he knows that he's a bad guy. But at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command him to go to Jannah. He was shocked. Is Allah playing with me, joking with me? <laughs> I know I'm going to hell. I, I'm prepared to go to hell now, you know. Because even in dunya, I was saying that everybody wants to go to Jannah, Jannah. Nobody wants to go to hell. I'm going to hell. You see, because, you know, Jannah will be packed. Hell will be, you, know, you don't have to queue up, you know, you can just walk in anytime you like. <laughs> they play around with words. You know, but this guy, Allah said, go to paradise. He was shocked. And then Allah said, do you know why I call you to go to paradise now? It's because of the prayer of your righteous child. Your righteous child can ask Allah to forgive all your sins. This is how good if you can have a system to train your children to give tarbiyah, to educate them to be righteous children. So brother, don't have to worry. Everything there is a hikmah. Just get prepared for the best, not for the worst, for the best. If people don't respect our right, we will have our patience and we will do what we can do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't feel regret, regret about that. Maybe there's a hikmah behind this. You know? And one day, inshallah, Allah will give us back the izzah. The izzah is from Allah, not from human. Your children won't be respect because he have a PhD, he has a master also. Allah will respect them. If they respect Allah, and Allah will give them their right and they will be respected by others. So brothers and sisters, may Allah bless us, may Allah guide us, may Allah strengthen our iman. And once again, to all the brothers, the good brothers, listen to the command of Allah. Ya ayuhallazina amanu. O oh, you who believe, save your soul and please save all the children and your wife from hellfire. And may Allah bless you. May Allah guide us. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Don't forget to pray for us and we will always remember all of you in our prayer. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaih. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair Sheikh. So guys, I want to ask a question real quick. He made a statement. He said that uh, if they don't hala your children to wear hijab, then you can have a private tutor for them maybe a teacher that will teach them privately does that really work apart from the studies children need to learn from each other you need to learn from other students the good and the bad that's why school is very very necessary and important so to me i believe there's no solution to it and you know most countries especially if you are not in a muslim country it will be very hard for you to get an islamic school for your children so if your children are not going to an islamic school and um they are being denied to wear their hijab i don't think it's a problem i don't think i know yes you need to dress modesty you need to dress according to your religion but when you don't have the chance to do so that should not limit you from doing what is best for you you know the school you want to send your your world into is a very good school then you should just you know i think leave that one aside but there are some government school i i know of i can vouch for in african country that even um you know somebody a family member close to me you know has actually taught in that kind of school in in government school and they don't stop them from wearing their hijab because government school is not owned by anybody it's owned by the government so you can't stop as a teacher you can't stop the student from wearing their hijab if only the child misused the hijab this man giving this solution i don't think the solution is the perfect solution to this problem he said if you have a daughter and they are not they denied her from wearing an hijab to school then you should have a private teacher for the child why you are limiting the child from growing properly because apart from she being taught in class you know it's good to go to school when you go to school you learn from your friends you learn from your environment in school that's how children get to understand school is good even though people always say school is a scam but as a young age you need to go to school 
we need to learn you have to have that knowledge you need to learn from your friends whether good or bad you will learn from them and it's it's, it's the responsibility for a parent to also teach their words to children that oh this is wrong this is right okay don't do this don't do that so i don't believe that should be the solution well some Parents, if they are cool with that, it's okay. But that will not allow the child to grow very well. The sisters, you know, they, you need to grow well. You need to, you know, socialize well. You know, school is a means of you socializing well, getting to understand things beyond your, your family. Because if you are just, you bring a tutor to the house, the child is always at home. Morning to night is always at home. No, the only time the child gets to go out is when he's going to mouth. How do you expect the sister to grow well? She won't grow well. She needs to socialize well. So having a private tutor is good. You can have a you can go to school and have a private tutor, but just limiting your child only to private tutor all because rejected the, the prevented or denied the fact that they should wear hijab, then you don't want her to go to school again. It's wrong. But schools should give when it comes to religion, give them freedom. As long as they are not doing something bad, give them their freedom to pray. If they, if a Muslim want to pray like a Muslim in school, let them pray. If the child wants to wear an hijab, let the child wear hijab. As long as you're not dressing indecently or you're not behaving badly, then that is okay. Well, let me know your thoughts in the comment box. Let's keep this discussion going. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.